Steve, thanks so much for joining us here on Slice. Kicking off the conversation, look, Jacobs has been on quite a transformative period over the last several years. Describe, what was the impetus for it? And it was all driven by the fact that this great company had run into a wall with regard to the way they were integrating acquisitions and lacking growth and, and concerned about the culture. And so the whole thing got started by focusing on the culture. Describe to me the culture. Where was it before and where is it now? The culture was a bit of a heads down, uh, you know, do good work and the future will take care of itself and lacked inspiration. And we were also lacking a bit of accountability. We had several hundred offices around the world all fending for themselves, just trying to maximize billable hours. And we wanted to transform that to be much more purposeful, you know, client-oriented solutions rather than billable hours but most importantly, engage every employee to where they feel inspired, they feel like they belong, and they feel connected to a strategy. So you know the problem, yeah. you're being told where it needs to get to, right. so how do you execute on that? We reorganized the company from this regional structure where sort of every office was in charge mm. to a global line of business structure. And so we became much more globally focused, uh, collaborative across these big businesses, rather than everyone kind of fending for themselves. What was noticeable when I first walked in, that 100% of the leadership were all men sitting in Pasadena, mm -hmm. California headquarters. So it lacked not only gender diversity, but it lacked geographic diversity. And it was sort of a, an ivory tower type mindset that everything centered in Pasadena, California. Hmm. And so we did a series of other initiatives to change that culture. We actually relocated the headquarters mm -hmm. to Dallas. We started diversifying the leadership. Today, I'm proud to say that over 60% of our executive leadership are women, hmm. and 75% of my executive leadership team is diverse. That's great. Not a lot of companies yeah. can say that, so that's a huge change in the last couple of years. What's the biggest lessons you've learned, or lesson you've learned in this transformation? It has to be 100% people-focused. It is all about our talent across the world, and unless they're inspired, uh, they feel like they understand exactly how they fit into what we're trying to do, the purpose of our company, and they, and they buy into that, meaning that it can't just be what we as leadership want. It has to be holistically, you know, what's important to the masses. Steve, do you feel like some of the things you put in place have helped with recruitment, particularly for the younger workers? By focusing on culture and focusing on diversity, uh, mental health is an area that we've invested heavily in. Today we have 1,700 mental health champions across the company. We've, we've committed to our employees that they matter and we recognize that it's a stigma. These are the type of things that our cultural focus is driving down our attrition, that it's not just going and recruiting great people, it's holding on to your great people. So the transformation also involved a rebrand. Yeah. New colors, new logo, single letter ticker symbol yeah. at the NYSC. So why was that so important? The new brand is powerful. Um, it gives uh, all of our employees an identity. If you look at Jacobs, we're a company that's made up of 70 acquisitions over 20, 30 years. And, you know, there's very few people that hired into Jacobs. I mean, the, the majority of the people from the came from acquisitions. And, and yet we had this, you know, Jacobs Blue brand, or it wasn't even a brand, but it was, you know, basically a focus that we've now transformed into something that 100% of our employees can identify with. It's more dynamic, yep. um, it has a purpose. Uh, we realigned our values. Today our values are that we do things right, which is all about execution and all the way to treating people the right way. We aim higher. So, you know, aim higher means profitable growth, but it also means the way we want to innovate, the way we want to challenge the accepted, et cetera, which leads to our third value of we challenge the accepted, mm. which um, means we're not just accepting what our customers ask us to do and go bid against com competition. We're challenging their thought, their ideas to say there's a better way. And then it's we live inclusion, mm. which is all about what I've been talking about, our culture and, yeah. and making 100% of our employees feel valued. And so the whole brand, which is now, you know, Jacob's challenging today, reinventing tomorrow, has caught hold with our employees uh, in a very exciting way, you know, with much more dynamic colors and font and our new J symbol, which is shifting to, you know, our mm -hmm. the new Jacobs with 
you know, the top of the J pointing upward and onward. And yes, the New York Stock Exchange, when I first called them, uh, called the CEO, Stacy, that and, and uh, asked if we could have the letter J that was available. And shortly thereafter, we heard the board approved it. We're very excited about being a uh, unique company with the with our powerful J symbol. Well, it is very unique, and we're happy we were able to do that, yeah. and well-deserved. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining us. Thank you, it's great to be here.